Hello YouTube, this is Captain Dave Sport Fishing YouTube channel Jacksonville, Florida and where do I happen to be at this moment? Well, it's one of my favorite places to do videos where I just chit chat for a minute or two here. Actually, you know that's full of crap. <laughs> that's way more, way more than a minute or two. I'm sitting in the Lazy Boy, and I uh, I got a delivery today that I thought I was going to share with you. As you can see, this is my box of gold. Box of gold. I told you that I'm kind of going to really give a shot at the old gold spoons on the uh, last week's live streams, Sundays at 6 p.m. And if you stick with me, I'm going to give you what this Sunday's live stream will be all about. But I discussed on the live stream, basically, the old... Uh, Johnson Gold Spoon. Oh, there we go. Got to untangle them. And I discussed why I like lures like this. Is because they're old, nostalgic, and oh so simple. Simple. No big time moving parts or anything like that and they've been around so long and people have forgot about them but the old gold spoon here I come to find out as I made in a community post on my YouTube channel that this thing has been around for a hundred years can you believe that? It stands the test of time. So that's sort of unbelievable. Now one thing I have learned by watching other people that are talking about the Johnson Gold Spoon is some people put a swivel on the front, some people don't. It seems to be that the bass fishermen don't. But the saltwater fishermen do. And with a split ring, of course, that's easy enough to take off if it turns out that you really don't want it on there. I'm going to look at a few other ones here. One guy said that if you looked at the eye here head on that you'll see it's not straight now I'm looking at it and he is correct but it's so hard to see is that if you take the spoon and put it exactly exactly flat that the eye right here has a bit of a turn in it it's not exactly perfectly straight and he said that is actually designed into when that eye as you can see right there that eye is soldered on there with the weed guard so that's kind of something and he says that's actually in there because the lure does the shimmy it kind of shimmies right but that's not the reason i'm showing you my big gold box the thing i'm going to show you is another long long standing lure now i don't have the I don't have the year or anything on this because I really haven't kind of looked it up. But that right there 
is a company, I guess they're bought out. All these companies have been corporate Pac-Man to death. You know, so you, you don't know what the deal is. But that right there says Sidewinder on it. And it's a spoon. It's an Acme Sidewinder. When's the last time you heard those two words? Even just Acme. Acme. Tackle. Oh my God, does that bring back memories to me of when I was a serious junior angler. I remember this Acme Tackle Company and they made all kinds of little spoons and stuff. Now this one is quite thick, the Sidewinder, and it's a three quarter ounce. And the neat thing about this is, it looks like nothing, but it is concave on this side, convex on this side, and if you look at it this way, it doesn't have the standard spoon kind of bending to it. And what do I mean? I mean a, the kind of bend that a regular spoon has. This is just a regular spoon. And see how it's got the kick in the bottom? It's got that kick. So it's shaped different which in turn gives it a different action than that spoon there. This is probably the predecessor to a fluttery, fluttering type spoon, I guess you could say. And of course they put this, you know, fish scale kind of pattern and the name on it. None of that matters. And I'll tell you, it comes with some hooks that are, God dang, them things are wicked sharp. And they're cheap. They're cheap. That's the thing. Lures and stuff today are so expensive. You know, uh, plugs, plastic plugs, and stuff can get so expensive. Well, even spoons can be, because I got these off of Tackle Warehouse. They had bunches of them, bunches. And luckily they had the three quarter ounce. So I got four of them because I may want something that is the predecessor to a fluttering spoon where it can, this can also just be retrieved and it can be fluttered off the bottom. Okay, so that's just an old name. I mean, there's the shape of it. You can kind of see the, the overall shape. So I just thought that was quite interesting. Is these, this company, I'm sure it's a division of the division of a divin of a, some kind of giant conglomerate. But there you go, an Acme Sidewinder. I mean, I can't wait to try these out and I might do it. I'm, I'm, I'm trying to just maybe go to a spot or two on Monday. I'll see what the weather is all about. And there's that giant Johnson Silver Minnow. But the other thing I wanted to tell you about is this Sunday's live stream, as we try to always do. Not always, but I try to do the live stream at 6 p.m. on Sundays here at the Jetty Wolf Fish Camp. I'll probably have Oral Walk join me again 
Because others, I'm inviting others that maybe want to be in on it, even along with Orwalk. I mean, I can do multiple people. If you want to volunteer, like I said, you need a laptop computer, you need email, and you need a webcam on that laptop. And you got to make sure that you know how it works, that it has good sound, and clean off the lens, you know, if you haven't used it. It's probably all covered in dirt or uh, dust. That's the three things you need. Email, the microphone, and the camera. That's all you need. I'll take care of the rest. And you need to be on time. That's another, another thing. I try to always get everybody, even me and Orawalk lately, have sort of gotten going about at least quarter of, if not 5.30. So, um, well, here's a steel shad. This is a 3 8 ounce little micro steel shad. It's supposed to have a hook right here, too, but that's just too many hooks. Around here, you know, in salt water, a ladyfish or something is just going to whack the heck out of the back of that. So that's just a little cheapy one I got picked up called the clown pattern. In our water, it doesn't matter. But, okay, this Sunday's live stream, the topic is going to be trailers. Boat trailers. Trailer maintenance. Because I got a few things that you may or may not know, you may not care, but it's good to reiterate this stuff. Especially for new boat buyers. New boaters. Because you know when the live stream is done, it goes out there onto YouTube. It goes out there into YouTube cyberland. It's not over. It goes out there on my channel. And I'm going to make a good thumbnail for it. And I'm going to name it, you know, all about tr boat trailers or something. Because you're talking to a guy right now who has what I feel is one of the best trailers made today. I mean, it was, and my boat trailer is going on like 17 or 18 years old, okay? And I'll try to talk about even the trailer that I have, my, my brand, and things that I've had to, I've done to it, and things that I have not had to do to it because of the way it's made. I'll give you a hint. The trailer is more important than the boat. Because if you can't get it to the water, then you're probably not going fishing. So I hope to see everybody on Sunday at 6 p.m. This is your sort of your notice here about the topic of this Sunday's live stream right here, live from the Jetty Wolf Fish Camp. So thanks for watching. I hope to, you know, I hope to be able to do videos and some reports on trout, redfish, flounder, that kind of stuff, species, coming off of these various gold medal lures. All right. That is and doing various things. Me and a friend of mine, just for, just to throw in a little story here, me and a friend of mine in a 14 foot John boat one time, were using quarter ounce Johnson Gold Spoons. And I don't know why we did it, but we ran a leader off the front about 12 inches and put a sliding egg sinker to swivel on it. And we literally were trolling creeks at low tide and when we got out of the creek, we had, you know, like 20 trout and a dozen flounder. All right. Just dragging these behind a, a, a John boat just puts them down a creek at low tide. We actually were catching tr uh, flounder as the motor was chugging through the mud. So, I mean, that was years and years ago. Me and an old buddy of mine, Greg.
he always had like little boats and he always wanted me to go with him and I went a couple times. It may have been the same day that I caught a raccoon on a popping cork. There's a story for you. So maybe I'll incorporate when I can actually get out and start fishing some of these. And I'm going to be dedicated because I am going to challenge myself. That's how I like to do fishing when I'm by myself. I like to challenge myself. And that's how you really learn. It may be that I challenge myself and this thing never gets touched. Who knows? But then I know. I know after all that. So let's chat trailers. Sunday, 6 p.m., Captain Dave's Sport Fishing YouTube channel, Jacksonville, Florida. That'll be the topic. Hope to see you there.